Ah, that's the reason why you're not winning. What, what are we exactly hitting? Because <laughs> your responsibility as an entrepreneur yes, is to make money, but the only way you make money as an entrepreneur is by what? Helping other people. Guess, guess what the greatest asset for me to invest in the last six and a half going on seven years has been? That's it. So, man, how long does that happen? Well, how big is your vision? What life did you sign up for? Notice it didn't say seven habits of half a millionaires. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. So, in my observation, forget the daggone surveys that you don't know who's surveying, but in my observation, working together with Inside PHP, we're always looking for habits. Habits. Everybody say habits. Habits, habits separates the wannabes from the actuallys. Habits separate the wannabes from the actuallys. So, do you actually want to be a millionaire or do you want to be a millionaire? So, if you're looking at how to make yourself financially free, you want to be financially free, you want to be a millionaire, yes? yes. Here's some seven habits here to follow. Uh, number one, you got to take ownership of everything. Some things or what? Everything. Everybody say everything. 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 Every, what, loud, loud and proud. Everything. everything. What are we talking about? Everything that goes on in your life. Instead of saying, oh, you know, it's somebody's fault, somebody else's fault, somebody else's fault. I'm not successful. My team did this. Have you ever been on an accountability call, accountability call or a mentoring call? So how come you hit your goals, you know, if you're sitting in front of the board? How come you missed budget? So here's a habit too as well. Are you taking charge of your hiring, your fire? Well, you know, my base shop coordinator sucks, man. Well, did you hire the right one? Why did you keep him on that long? You got listen. Running a home, your own staff is different than hiring uh, independent contractors because one, you're actually paying. There's a different level of accountability for you taking things not only personally, but you take things more so professionally. How many times you get corrected and you get your what do you, what do they say? You get your butt hurt. You get a pop out from uh, from a mentorship. You next thing you hold a grudge against your mentor, instead of saying, oh, you know what? That was on me. Finances and reinvestment, you're in charge of your money. The biggest uh, challenge I see with uh, a lot of people early on in their career, they end up spending their money too fast. They end up upgrading their lifestyle too fast. And guess whose problem that is? It's nobody else's, it's your fault. F uh, for the first, what, five years of PHP agency, we lived in his house. We called it Section 8 Housing for Millionaires. <laughs> So one of my guys was taking me back from uh, cigars, and I kind of like what we did last night. We did cigars after after we wrapped up cigars. One of my guys uh, was taking me home because uh, at that time Sheena, um, I think we had that for a period of time there we only had one truck. I think for the, uh, how long did we have uh, for like uh, two years, three years? We only had one vehicle. Like never, nobody ever knew that. We had one vehicle in the first two, three years at PHP. One Escalade, and every time you open up the passenger door, it went pat pat. Now how many times it put WD-40 in it? It always. Rusted back up. But anyway, make a long story short, my guy was dropping me off in the house. He goes, hey man, I'm excited to take this millionaire home. I'd love to see his house. Where do you live? Where does this millionaire live? He takes me to the house. Okay, good, good. All right, do I make a left or do I make a right? Bro, you're in front of my house. <laughs> this is where you live? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. And then the next thing, he's, it's, funny, it's a funny story, but he ends up spreading a funny rumor that, hey, did you see where the Sapalas live, it's like the Section 8 housing for millionaires. You know why? Guess what, guess what we were doing? We were capitalizing. For a large period of time, I didn't even know what money we had in the bank account. Why? Because we're busy taking ownership of our a business, because we're capitalizing. You know the coolest thing about coming here to Dallas and negotiating office? Is having cash and credit. We can go to any office. Hey, give me office space, office space, office space. Come on! Rent me an office already. Ah, eh, too big, too small, not, not in a good area. But the last thing on our mind was whether or not we qualified. Sometimes people submit an application and it's not really a desirable location, whether for an apartment or for an office location. Oh, please, would you just let me rent there? Would you just let me live there? But because you took ownership of your finances, guess what happens? You start having control of where you live, what you do, where you go to school, where you build your, where you build your office at. Here's the thing too as well, is you guys are starting to win. You wanna know a great indication of a leader and a habit that's starting to sprout around them is that not only are they winning, guess what else happens? 
their teams are starting to win. So not only are you winning, but are other people winning with you? So those are the, those are the benchmarks. When you win, do other people win with you? Next slide. Thanks, Teeks. Technically and tactically proficient. That's a habit. So what was Sheena teaching on? Just now, right before me. She's teaching you skills. She's teaching you the techniques. You see uh, Instagram, you see Ricky out there in the firing, uh, in the firing line with his uh, gold, uh, f uh, <laughs> gold weaponry. <coughs> Are guys shooting guns? Okay, it's one thing to know how to shoot guns, but it's also th uh, another thing to know when to shoot and who <laughs> and when and where <laughs> and how. Because you have to know what to do and when to do it. Okay, next, next one, number three. I asked Patrick, what makes the greatest CEOs? What makes the, the uh, what separates the wannabes from the, from the, from, from what separates the people that actually do it from the, from the actual wannabes? And here it is. The greatest people are data-driven in business, that are data-driven, they're people-driven, and crusade-driven. Because it's easy to be pumped up, right? But what, what, do you be, what do you get pumped up about? So therefore, you're less emotional about your business. In the same process too, you never forget who you're serving. Because your responsibility as an entrepreneur yes, is to make money. But the only way you make money as an entrepreneur is by what? Helping other people. By finding people's problems and creating a solution to, to help them. You're specific about your business, not general. No, the, the coolest thing about PBD, when we're, we're watching him in motion, he casts a vision, right? Man, does he get down to the details? We have, everybody say this word, predictive analytics. Predictive One more time, everybody together. Predictive analytics. Predictive so what's the specifics that you need to drive your business? How many guys have already identified just for your day-to-day, -day, two, three, four, maybe even five areas to improve your business? Yes? Circle the ones that you're going to improve right away. Identify your leaks and your trends. You know, listen, uh, uh, by ethnic background, I'm Filipino. Born and raised in Chicago, served eight years in the Marines, 12 years inside the insurance industry before I got to PHB agency, right? But majority of my team is what? Civilians. What ethnic background is the Money Smart Movement predominantly African American. <laughs> I think we helped increase the African American community in PHP by up to 35%. Up for 18 to 35%. We doubled. Right? And then we have, we have a bunch of our guys that are half and half, like Mexican, like, like Vic and Anna. Vic's like half black and Mexican, Puerto Rican, and everything else. And then you have my wife, half black, half white, right? So we, have, we have a nice mixture of African American, Latino, Asian, Caucasian. Listen, we care about one color in MSM it's green. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't care about this, then we can't help you. I don't care where you come from. Because no matter what community you're in, this will help that community. If you're able to have a habit by being driven by data, like where do I need to improve? What people do I, ha do I need to have? Am I a true believer? Do you have people in your team that can be true believers for your organization? That can stand up for what you stand for when you're out traveling, building your teams in other locations? Do you have true believers in your office that have, that have the high standards that they can still maintain? And never forget why you're doing what you're doing. Next slide, uh, Teeks. Number four. What type of decisions are you making? We're having a conversation uh, downstairs about alternative ways you can invest your money. I wouldn't even mention it because I don't want you guys getting all distracted. Right now, are there many different ways you can make short-term cash? Yeah. But what are you guys building? A short-term business or a long-term business? Are you guys here to make, uh, just make uh, six figures, seven figures this year or for the rest of your life? And how many of you want to pass on this business to your children one day? And then your children pass on this business to their children one day. And when you're, look at, when you're looking at this decision of making things for the long term, means that you don't get distracted by the short term profits and you violate certain morals, values, and principles that you really don't stand for just to make a buck. Because when you're grounded in those morals, values, and principles, guess what starts to happen? That's a natural filtering process for you just to even, not even think about distractions. Now, 
Does that mean I, I, I'm, I'm encouraging not to look at other things, to diversify your portfolio? Of course you should diversify your portfolio. But in lion's share for me, guess, guess what the greatest asset for me to invest in the last six and a half going on seven years has been? That's right, right. Myself, my wife, our family, our business. It's been the greatest return on investment. We could have been called the, the MSM crypto. <laughs> We can be called the MSM Shibu Inu, right? Whatever you call it, MSM to the moon, right? Whatever those trendy words are. By the way, these are, these are trends, but guess what has always been in financial services? A foundation, life insurance. And you never wanna get caught up in trendy things. Never wanna wrap up your business in a trend, a product, or a philosophy. Why? Do trends, products, and philosophies change? And so we look into this. Are our decisions made for the long term? That's a habit. These things that we ask you to do. Qualify for everything. Qualify for this. Qualify for that. You have to understand these are things that are just sowing a seed to build the long term future, your vision that you have and creating it a reality. Uh, next slide, please. Number five. Here's a habit. How many times do you have to hear something to actually change, to actually do? How many times do you gotta hear something? You know, Sheena, Sheena and I have this natural uh, conversation and desire between the two of us that when we hear something once, we do it. We not understand it, but we just go, go and do it anyway. Why? Because if you're working with speed implementation, it is the fastest way to pass up your competition. Fastest way to, uh, fastest way to um, keep your mentor. How many guys say you mentor people in your organization? Raise your hand if you mentor people in your business. Yeah, you have a team? How many times do you get frustrated? You're telling the same thing over and over and over, they don't do it. So, well, well, if you're not doing it from your mentor, how do you expect them to implement it with you? It's baked into your calendar. It's a no matter what. Like people do, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna show up to work on Monday. Well, people already know you go to work on Monday. Why do you even have to think about it? See, that's a habit. Number six. All right, another habit of highly successful millionaires, remove and refuse toxic behavior. Who's, who to start with? You. First person, well, you know, how, how many guys have been with somebody and they read a personal self-development book and they think you need to change? <laughs> <laughs> you go to church, oh, hey amen, hallelujah. See, that's what you need to do. What are you talking about? You ain't got your own mess? <laughs> Friends and family sometimes need to be cut out. Watch when you start making money. Guess how many people start asking you for money? Then you got to create a policy how you lend or give money to family members. I have a policy, I don't lend many money to family members. I have a 10% rule. Whatever you ask me for, buy it's a hidden rule. Don't tell me anybody in my family. Let's say they ask me for five grand. I, man, I can't help you five grand, but here's 500 bucks, knock yourself out, don't worry about paying me back. The only thing I'll maximize my contribution to this is for charity. Like my sister, she has this thing called slavery no more, where she raises money for uh, fighting human trafficking. I'll 100% give it to her, whatever she's asking for. But hey, you know, cousin, I need $5,000 to start my own business. To, to do what? Uh, uh, I can't really, we can't explain it. What, what, well, how much of my money is combined with your money? No, no, it's only, only going to be your money in this business. No, forget about it. It's, why? It's easy to raise money for me and spend my money and you not feel bad about it when you lose my money. And how do I collect back from you? I don't know. Your family. No, that's not the way things work around here. Environment. By the way, I even say some of the music. Sometimes I get in some, um, some people's cars. I go on field training with them. I get in their cars and I, I see what they're listening to on the radio. Ah, that's the reason why you're not winning. You listen to the wrong things, man. By the way, you like reggaeton beat, you like Afro beats, whatever beat, make your own damn music. Have you ever like, sat down with one of these college kids, hey, I want you to create some lyrics and put it to this beat and I want you to make me a track. That's what we started doing. We started creating our own music because I want to hear my own affirmations. Because inside the lyrics, they sneakily put things in there that you really don't need to be listening to. One time I was driving my, uh, uh, my son to, uh, to school, Jojo. Boom, 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 we're driving, okay. No music in the car. Next thing you know, Jojo in the back. You can hit it in the morning. <laughs> what, what are you, we exactly hitting? <laughs> right, come to find out because the, the nanny had the Ariana Grande in the back. You can hit it in the morning. <laughs> 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 
Okay, I'm having a conversation with Nanny. Uh, 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 no more music in the car? Only Disney songs? <laughs> right? Here's, here's an area that you need to really consider. Blame, self-pity, entitlement, helplessness, victim mentality. Those are things that you need to remove from your life. Group. Now, do you give somebody personal time or do you give somebody group time? Because as you start growing your business, some people just, how many, how many people do you have that are high maintenance to you but low profit? Because they don't have speed of implementation. And they say the same story to you, the same story to them, the same story to them, and why they're not performing because of what happened to them when they were 14 years old. And by the way, PHP, guess what we all have here? We all got issues. Say, I have problems. Here's the better part, I have solutions. Uh, don't think that you're helpless. Yesterday in a dream team call, one of the guys was, uh, was, was sharing something. Oh, I, I can't even figure this out. How, what am I gonna ever get there? Patrick Wright sh shuts him down. You guys remember this on dream team? He shuts him down, hey, 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 hey. Stop acting like you're helpless. Stop acting like you can't do anything about it. Okay, then he coached him from there. Process and win. So, so how, do you, how do you process victories? So the same thing too with setbacks. So here, here, here's, what, here's what I picked up from interviewing NFL athletes. They talk about the 20, 24 hour rule. You have a big win or a failure, you have 24 hours to process it. Celebrate or more and you got 24 hours to do it. After that, let's get back in the facility, watch game tape. We're, 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 we're waging, waging war for the next game. So can you do that? What happens after closeout? What happens after closeout? The next day, get right back at it. Oh man, my closeout sucked. It's great, get back at it. Oh man, we have a fantastic closeout. Great, let's get back at it. That's it. When somebody goes, man, how long does that happen? Well, how big is your vision? What life did you sign up for? Notice it didn't say seven habits of half a millionaires. <laughs> Remember, we just talked about intensity and consistency. That's, a, that's the big difference. If you do half of this, you'll become a half million. If you do a quarter of this, you'll be a quarter million dollar. If you do a tenth of this, you'll be a six-figure income earner. Last slide. All right, last point. I got a few more slides. Embrace discipline. Everybody say the word discipline. discipline. Man, that word sucks, doesn't it? For some people, that word sucks. Why? Because there's power in delayed gratification. Power in delayed gratification. How many times uh, uh, you see somebody, you wonder where their numbers are, and next thing you know you see on Instagram or social media that they're on vacation. Like, what do you take a vacation for? I haven't taken a vacation yet. We haven't hit our goals. You know what Ricky was saying earlier? Sometimes half your team can care less about your goals. They care more about theirs. So you remind them about their goals. Hey, I thought you said you want to do this. You want to do that. You want to do this. Well, how can we take a vacation? Well, you know, the kids, well, you know, the kids, listen, what time of vacation are you taking over there anyway? Where are you guys staying? Well, you know, it's my mom's house. I'm saying they, they have this low standard where they stay. Here's things too as well. You know, how many guys have heard the, 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 the three phases where you're overworked and underpaid? We're just talking about this with the Sikas. You're overworked and you're what? Underpaid. underpaid. That phase sucks. But it's such the most important critical aspect of building this business. And then the second phase is now you're starting to get paid what you are worth. You're starting to pay 50,000 a year, 100,000 a year, 250,000 a year, 500,000 a year, million dollars a year, two million dollars. You're starting to get paid what you are now worth. We're booking speakers for our event. Here's what the speakers want for one hour of their time. They know their worth. Do you know your worth? Because if you knew your worth, you wouldn't let other people waste your time. That's a habit of being a millionaire. You wouldn't let distractions waste your time. Are you committed to constant, never-ending improvement? Are you getting to the right events, associations? And, and let me just break this down. This is my last slide. If you follow these habits, this is what the reality can be for you. Remember I told you about the overworked and underpaid, uh, uh, overworked and underpaid and you get paid what you're worth, then you start going to the underworked and overpaid phase? Well, we haven't gotten close to there yet. Talk to me on around $5 million in income. Maybe one might be there. But this is our first year, 2015. I don't know if you guys see this. 2015. Sheena's personal income was 131 in terms of her personal writing business. We're both licensed, but Sheena's responsible for writing all the policies. I focused primarily on recruitment, building, and, and, and marketing, and leadership development. So our overrun on our team in, in MSM was $77,000 in 2015. 131 from personal production, $77,000 for override. So that year we made 208. Not bad for your first year, pretty decent. Second year, personal production, 194. This is the first year we ran a million point base shop. 452 on, on override. You see what happened when we decided to duplicate ourselves and other people? And other people started following the habits? 
So 131 and 194 in personal income, 452. We went from 208 income to 646 in income. How would you guys like to go from $200,000 income to 646 in a year? Of which 452,000 of it was over ride. Third year. Third year started ca uh, our, our uh, our uh, cash flow million started to start not after 52 uh, on a 52 week cycle 144 so in other words if uh, if if we had stayed as a salesperson's production mentality me myself and i not build anybody guess what it would happen to our income did it grow or did it fall in person production it fell went from 194 to 144 in in, in person production but guess what happened to the overwrite income because we kept building and we kept taking ownership of our process and our systems and qualifying for everything guess what happened to our income eight hundred thousand dollars in overwrite we made our first cash flow millions that year. The next year, 2008, 2018, 90, so our income went from 144 down to 95,000. For some people in a sales mentality, not recruiting and building, in a personal production buy leads mentality, guess what happened to their cash flow and their lifestyle? It fell. They're freaking out. By the way, that's where I was for 12 years as a personal producer. But guess what happened to our override income? It increased to 863, 2019. 65,000 per production, $1.2 million in override. So right now, would you say, if my goal was to be a millionaire, a cash flow millionaire, if Sheena and I did nothing, would we still probably be, uh, pull in, in seven figures? Yes. So technically, we're retired. Are we not? Yes. That's the equivalent of having 100 apartment building and collecting rent without the risk and the mortgage and the taxes and the government on, on my back. 2020, didn't we... Didn't we all experience a pandemic last year? Yes. Sheena writes personal production, oh, it spikes to 195. PHP agency last year grew by 45%. MSM grew by 63% last year in the midst of a pandemic. $1.6 million in override. The question you gotta ask yourself, if these are habits worthy of following, these are the results potentially you might have if you incorporate some of these habits. Here's a better part, and I'll wrap up with this last line. It's not with you just winning, it's when other people are winning together with you. If you add up what we paid commissions to our guys since we got here to PHP agency. So in other words, 2015, we paid over 865,000 commissions to MSM, 2.05 2, 2 million to people at MSM, 2017, 2.6 million dollars in commissions to MSM, 2018, 3.7 million dollars in commissions to MSM. Is it growing, by the way? Is it growing? Yes. 2019, we paid $6.1 million in commission to MSM. 2020, last year in the midst of a pandemic, we doubled $13 million in commission we paid to MSM. So in other words, our little $199 business, because we decided to invoke these habits, invoke delayed gratification, invoke avoiding toxic relationship, invoke being technically and tactically proficient, establish some of these habits on a day-to-day -day basis, we've paid commissions to everybody that we've been around recruiting to our organization a little over $49 million since we got in 2015. And I know if this is something that Sheena and I can do, shoot, it can happen to you.